Hello fellow Earthlings, it's Libs, and today I'm going to be talking about my most disappointing reads of 2020. Now this video isn't to bash any of the books that I read last year. All of these books definitely have value, some of them I know are actually really popular. They're just books that for whatever reason I personally didn't enjoy or weren't to my tastes. I'm going to talk about the good parts of them as well as the parts I didn't like and uh, who I think might actually enjoy these books a lot more than I did. These weren't bad books, most of them are just books that I had hyped up quite a bit and they didn't quite reach the height that I hoped they would. So the first book was actually my least favourite read of 2020 and that's The Lifted Veil by George Eliot. This is a tiny little book, it only has two chapters, and I really want to say something nice about it, but I can't. It's, it was my first George Eliot, and it's not what I expected at all. I found the writing style very, very difficult. I felt like I had to grab a dictionary constantly because I didn't really understand a lot of the terminology. That was used throughout this book and I just kind of lost the actual narrative of the story within the very clunky <laughs> very detailed text so it's not a classic I'd personally recommend I think if you're already a fan of George Eliot you might really enjoy this but I think if you've never read George Eliot before it's probably not going to be the one to start with because I really struggled with it the second book is one that part of me really enjoyed, but it didn't quite live up to the expectations I'd set upon it, and that's Grand Union by Zadie Smith. This And this is a collection of short stories. I really, really enjoyed a lot of the themes that were explored within this book, but I feel like some of the stories were trying so hard to fit all those themes in, that they just became a little bit messy to me. I think, yeah, they just... There were some really good ones in there. Um, particularly the, some of the stories that were about Brexit I found really interesting, but then they'd try and fit some of the other themes from other stories in, and it just didn't quite work for me. Um, I think the only reason I found this disappointing is because I've heard so many great things about Zadie Smith and just like The Lifted Veil, I feel like I started with the wrong book. The collection has still made me very interested to read Zadie Smith and I think if you're already a fan of her work, you might really, really enjoy this. It might just be that I haven't read a lot of short story collections and I'm not used to her writing and I just found it a little bit difficult. But I think a lot of people would really enjoy this book. I feel I think it's got kind of mixed reviews on Goodreads, so I don't think I'm the only one who struggled a little bit with this one. But I definitely see its value, and I think there would definitely be an audience for it. That audience just didn't happen to be me. The third book is the one that I think will be the most controversial, and that is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I feel really, really bad that I don't get the hype behind this book. I feel so bad about it. I wish that I got it, but I don't. I don't get the hype. It is a beautifully written story. It explores some very interesting themes. It just wasn't a plot that I cared about. And I tried. I tried. I picked it up and put it down so many times, I just could never get into this book. For me, its biggest drawback was I feel like it lacked some subtlety regarding its metaphors. To me, it felt like Neil Gaiman was running at me with a hammer screaming, this is a metaphor, this is a metaphor, and trying to hit me over the head with it. It just was a bit much for me. But I can see why other people would love this book. It's, again, beautifully written, very, very interesting, just not the kind of book that I personally like. Again, I'm not, I'm still interested in trying out something else from Neil Gaiman. This book just wasn't the one for me. 
And the last book I want to speak about is Josephine's Garden by Stephanie Parkin. This is a book that is about... It's not really about the life of Empress Josephine. It's kind of about, a little bit about her, but it's a lot about the creation of her garden at Malmason. I understand what this text was trying to do and I appreciate it. I appreciate the research that went into this book. Um, I quite liked the writing style. I just think that this was a very, very, oh, what's that doing? <laughs> this was a very ambitious book and I think it tried to do too much. There are five um, character perspectives you follow throughout this book and they weren't all necessary. Um, I kind of wish you would just it just followed the three women. I think that would have tied in with some of the themes that the book was trying to explore better. And I think that would have made it more cohesive story. I also, it also did this weird thing where, um, I don't, I don't mind if a book, you know, if there's some sexy times happening between the characters, that doesn't bother me. But for me, it needs to either commit to it or it needs to fade to black. I couldn't really deal with these weird phrases that just seem to come out of nowhere that just felt very uncomfortable. I mean, I physically groaned and went, oh, why is it phrased like that? In almost every chapter for the first half of this book, it just was not necessary. It just was phrased really poorly. It also suffered from jumping perspectives so often that if there was an interesting event, the perspective would have changed to someone who wasn't actually there for the event and you just get to hear a couple sentences about the aftermath and that didn't work for me. I wanted to know. You know, if there's an explosion, I want to know how the characters who were there during the explosion felt and what they did. I don't want to hear another character just briefly say, there was an explosion and then they left. Like, it's not, it's not what I wanted from this book. I think if you already know a bit about Empress Josephine, if you're a big historical fiction fan, if you've read a lot of books that deal with so many different perspectives, you might really enjoy this. And there were parts of this book that I really, really enjoyed. I just couldn't get past the things that really bothered me about it. I also struggled with some of the um, clearly abusive actions that happen within this book aren't really called out. They're kind of brushed over. And I get that our main character doesn't want to deal with it being abuse, but I wish in some way it had been acknowledged because it's kind of just referenced so quickly and then never mentioned again. And I just, it was that little bit uncomfortable for me, but it might not be uncomfortable for you. And I still think there are people who really like this book. I know that at some of my local bookshops, I've seen it recommended as um, a bookseller's favorite. And I can understand that it would have an audience. And I definitely think if you're interested, you should give it a go, but it just wasn't for me. So that is it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe down below and I will see you next time. Bye.